The Holy Spirit, part two. Uh, last week, I spoke uh, on Pentecost Sunday out of Acts chapter one, verse eight. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses. And we talked about the miracle that Pentecost was, that God fulfilled his promise to send a helper, a comforter, an advocate, a counselor, a guide, uh, because God is faithful to fulfill his promise. And we talked about how this Pentecost moment actually welcomed the church into a whole new era, an era that was marked by his power and his presence. And, uh, but I, I spoke specifically how the Holy Spirit helps us walk in power for our inside world. Uh, he's advocating for the will of God in our lives. You have to remember that the Holy Spirit is your advocate, and he's advocating for the will of God to be accomplished in your life. And oftentimes he does that on the inside by transforming us to be spirit-led, uh, so that we bear the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, those are the things that we want to hang off the tree of our lives. Amen? I'm going to shift today. We're going to continue uh, on the Holy Spirit. But what I want to talk about today is how God actually wants us to walk with him and work with him to see his kingdom rule and reign established through signs, wonders, miracles that are expressed through gifts of the Holy Spirit. That was a loaded statement, but I, I, I'll explain what I mean and we're going to start here in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 11. Uh, Paul, speaking to the church of Corinth, says this, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. Finally, he says, all these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Let's pray, and, and Tim, I skipped over something, so that's, that'll be at the end. Just give me a seat. You don't have to stand right there for the whole time. Um, thanks, though. Appreciate you. Love you. Um, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much uh, for your power, for your presence, and ultimately for your Holy Spirit that's been given so generously. And uh, now, God, we ask that through your word that you would lead us into truth, that you would illuminate, and uh, by your word you would exalt Jesus in our midst. Lord, we're so thankful that we've been given access into your holy place. So lead us, guide us, teach us, encourage us. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Um, I, uh, I had kind of a funny minute, moment at um, lunch the other day, uh, and my wife called me out on it because I, I kind of zoned out and I got a little bit grumpy. I'll tell you why. Um, We've been in this really cool season of blessing. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I, I don't, don't hear that at all in me, please. But we've just had a really cool season of blessing on our lives over the last few months. It's been just really cool signs and wonders and stuff that God's just done. And, uh, you know, I, someone sent us uh, seven nights in, on Maui as a family, and, which was just, a ble just mind-blowing that someone gift that to us so we could take our kids to do something like that. We couldn't do that on our own means. It was just God that did that. And, um, but we paid for our flights, and, and I, I'm, I'm a bargain guy. Like, I'm, I'm thrifty, man. You know, our family, my wife included, we never buy anything full price. That's just, that's just our lives, man. We're, we're discount shoppers, and, which I'm so thankful for a wife who, who's like that. I've been, I prayed my whole life that she would, I'm just kidding. Um, and I've saved so much money since we don't stop at Target anymore. It's been amazing. Uh, <laughs> what a blessing, right? I'm like, yeah, did you hear about Sephora? <laughs> they, yeah. <laughs> Scheme something up, you know, like. 
Uh, but um, so I just booked the cheap flights, you know, whatever whatever we could get, and uh, used some points and things, and kind of schemed it together. And, and so we're at the airport waiting, and uh, you know, just premeditating the the potential hell it could be, you know, with flying with four kids five and under for five and a half hours on an airplane. And I hear the beautiful noise of our, my name being called over the intercom. You know, John Sparrow, would you come to the ticket gate? And I come up there and. And uh, she said, hey, uh, we just upgraded your family. Uh, you guys get, you know, premium economies. So there's ex- extra leg room, a few extra bells and whistles. And we're really excited about that. You know, it takes the sting off a little bit. And so we get to fly like that. Didn't happen on the way back. So God, come on, man. But, um, <laughs> you know, I get back and uh, you guys heard me tell it a testimony where someone gifted us a mattress, like this is a big deal for us because we're sleeping on a full-size mattress that I've had since I was 17 years old. Um, it's just falling apart. It's for my Kia for $99. Um, and someone gifted us like this amazing bed. It was, it's incredible. So we were just so blessed and it was, it was an upgrade. You know, from a full size to a queen size and we're sleeping better and uh, who knew? <laughs> you know? Um and then uh, last weekend, I was, uh, just hear me out, guys, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to brag on God, but I'm trying to prove a point. I was at this, this contest with my, my cousin Josh, the surf contest, and we bought the cheapest thing. Basically, if you buy parking in this field, you just get in, right? They, you get like two free tickets. So we do that route, and we're there hanging out, happen to run into a friend who's a photographer, and he's like, well, what are you guys doing out here? You know, I can get you wristbands. And so he gets us wristbands, we're like in VIP, and I'm so funny in situations like that because, you know, like you feel like an imposter and they got free stuff and we're getting all the free stuff, like taking full advantage of these, this free stuff. We're just like kids in a candy store, you know. We get upgraded to this VIP section and, you know, chatting it up with who's who in the zoo, just absolute fools. My friend probably regretted it, you know. Like, who let these guys in? This doesn't happen all the time, man. And uh, so that was amazing. And then, you know, we were out of town last week and we get there. Again, I booked just like the cheapest room at this hotel. And all six of us, we're going to be just fine. We get there and the guy says, actually, we just had a last minute cancellation. We're going to give you a two bedroom suite. Is that okay? I said, of course that's okay. <laughs> and so I, I just say all that to say, yes, God, it's a blessing. And I don't want to ever give you a false presumption that life gets better when you become a Christian because oftentimes it gets worse and not all seasons are like that. And I just don't want to lead anybody into thinking that it's all upgrades and fancy. That It's not what I, the point I'm trying to prove. The point I'm trying to prove is, is that I would hate to raise my kids in an environment because this is, this is what happened. Ready? <laughs> this is, kills me. So we, we've had a few blessings along the way, some hotels and things like that. So one time, not long ago, we were staying just a regular, which anybody would just be so thankful to stay in just like a regular hotel room, right? Our five-year-old walks to the door and she said, what the heck? Where's the living room? <laughs> like, whose kid is this? <laughs> I'm not buying the one with the living room. <clears throat> but at the same time, I was hate to raise my kids in an environment and a culture where they expected less and not more. Where they just settled for, for whatever was handed to them, the lot in life. And, but in our environment, in our world, we actually create an environment where we have a confident expectation that good is around the corner. Yeah. It's like that maybe there's a miracle around the corner. Maybe there's provision around the corner. Maybe God's going to reconcile something around the corner. And yes, that's not all butterflies and babies all the time and upgrades and the whole thing. But I would hate to create something in my children that always expected less. And what Paul's saying to the Corinthian church, he's saying to them, uh, I don't want you to be uninformed about the things of the Spirit. He's saying, I don't want you to miss out on something more, something greater, and something better. Because the way you used to live as pagans, he uses the word pagans. He, he said, you used to worship mute idols. I don't want you to be uninformed. I, and another version says, I don't want you to be ignorant about what's actually available to you. And What he's addressing is that when they were pagans, they worshipped idols that were deaf, that were mute, and had no ability to actually lift the burden of anything. And so this is what we can gather from idols. They may have ears, but they don't hear. They may have mouths, but they do not speak. They may have arms, but they do not lift burdens. These people were connected and had a default to go to things that were actually worthless at their core. It was connected to false hope. 
pagan rituals and sacrifices were falling on deaf ears and there was no hope for intervention from their idols. An idol may have a mouth, but it can't speak. An idol may have ears, but it cannot hear. An idol may have hands, but it cannot lift your burden. And I know it's fun to, you know, think about this historical church thousands of years ago in the city of Corinth and, you know, all their issues of what they were facing and how they were forming this new community and the new way to be human as Christians. But I, I can't but help but think that sometimes in Scripture, God's speaking directly to me and you and addressing some idols <laughs> and addressing some places where he has settled for uh, things that have ears but they cannot hear, who have mouths but they cannot speak, who have hands but cannot lift our burdens. And I, I just want to define this a little bit because idolatry, it's just a light, easy Sunday morning message. It technically refers to the worship of an image or figure considered uh, a representation or copy of a deity or deity can be a supreme being. And so it's anything that has the persona or the facade that is going to do what God does. <clears throat> it's anything that we would imagine would fulfill us at the core. It's anything that we'd imagine would bring us some sort of satisfaction. It would imagine that it was going to bring us some provision. It was going to bring us some sort of way out. It's something we put our, our hope in, expecting that thing to do what only God can do. That's an idol. And historically, throughout the biblical narrative, God is continually leading his people away from idolatry. Because it's our human nature, isn't it? Moses goes up to the mountain to seek the Lord, and God's visiting. He comes back down not long after, and the people have, have gathered this, this golden calf to worship because just intrinsically they know we must worship something, and somehow they make this idol, and their, their response is to worship because as people, we're made to worship. As people, we're looking for the thing that is God, and so if it isn't God, we will make up all kinds of things to manufacture what we think God's supposed to do. And so how does idolatry work? We choose something that we see as worthy of our hope, our worship, our affection, attention, and resource. Um, you know, idolatry it seems like a heavy word, but it's actually pretty easy to diagnose in our own lives. You can follow your worship. You can follow your sacrifice. You can follow this. When, when I feel overwhelmed, for me, when I feel overwhelmed, I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> Any sleepers out there? Just, uh, just, just forget it, you know. Um, or shopping, or eating, or whatever our coping mechanisms might be. When we're full of fear, hop on Google, figure that thing out, right? I'm a Googler, diagnoser right there, WebMD, whatever I got to do. I'm just scared. I'll figure it out on Google. We distract ourselves, watch another show. We numb ourselves by medicating. Or when we're in lack, you know, we just, we just kind of scheme and and hustle, and nothing wrong with working hard. I, I, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you can trace idolatry in your life to your first response. What do you go to to do the thing that God's supposed to do? And what Paul is saying is to remember that an idol, it may have a mouth, it may have ears, it may have hands, it might have some sort of symbol or sign that it's going to do what God can do. In other words, it may have all the attributes of something that can fulfill and satisfy, but it never will. And so Paul is, is, is nudging them and welcoming them into this new reality that this God they now worship, he's alive and he's well. He's active and his Holy Spirit is working in and through the church in an exciting variety of ways. And this is a really good exchange. This is a great pivot for Paul to start talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Because what they were used to previously was sacrifice and worship and, and striving and toiling for something that would never respond. It was false. It was dead. It was not alive. And now he's saying, hey, welcome into this new life where the spirit is active. He's alive. He's well. He's working. And better than that, he's inviting you in to be a part of what he's calling you to be. And so here comes the glorious Holy Spirit by whom God speaks. Here comes the Holy Spirit by whom when we pray the mysteries of heaven uh, to a God who actually hears us. And the Holy Spirit who comes and he actually lifts burdens and does the thing that idols can never do. And so he's saying, don't be ignorant or don't be uninformed about the things of the Spirit. There's an invitation for you to actually participate in these things. It's not for you to observe. It's for you to jump in and get your hands on. 1 Corinthians 2, 
verse 9 through 16, I, I love the way it says it is, however, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. This is, this is really good news. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. Get this, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit. Explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. The, the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. The, spirit, the person with the um, uh, spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord as to instruct him? But get this, he says this, but we have the mind of Christ. I, I read all that to say that there, there's some people who only take part of this scripture, what no eye has seen or ear has heard, the things that God has prepared for those whom he loves. And, and they kind of treat this whole Christian walk as a big mystery, you know? Like, I don't know what God's saying or what he's doing or, you know. <laughs> I get there's seasons like that, but what the scripture is clearly telling us is that you don't have to live that way. <laughs> You have the mind of Christ, and you've received the Spirit of God that knows the hidden things of God. You have access to understand what he's freely given you. And so if you've been living under some sort of you know, ceiling that you can't hear God, that you can't walk by his Spirit, that you can't know what's not known by just human wisdom, I want to remind you that you have the mind of Christ, and you've received the Spirit of God to know, to understand, and to walk in the things of the Spirit. And that's really good news. And so the list in 1 Corinthians, he gives a list. The, the first thing is wisdom. And uh, just skip over that for time. Um, the first thing is wisdom, that you can rely on the gift of the Spirit for wisdom to, to make better choices, but also uh, wisdom is redefined in 1 Corinthians 1 as, as the gospel. The gospel is, is foolishness to the world, but it's wisdom for those who are walking into it. So you receive the gift of wisdom by a spirit. The next one is a message of knowledge or uh, a word of knowledge. This is really cool um, because I, I just want to make these known to you that you have access and can walk by the spirit in the gifts of the spirit. And so you may have been part of our services before or in some sort of context where someone stands on a platform or out in the street somewhere and they said, hey, I, I just feel like, you know, you have a, a shoulder thing and you know, God just spoke to me, someone's shoulder's out of whack, he just had surgery three weeks ago, and God's going to heal it, or like the other day, a few weeks ago, I was at CVS, and the Holy Spirit just spoke to me that the lady working at the counter had a son who had moved away, and not only was he removed geographically, there had actually been some distance created uh, in the relationship, it was strained, and it was breaking her heart, but God wanted to heal it, and so I just said, hey, uh, you know, <laughs> I think I'm crazy, but... Um, I know God, and sometimes he shares things, and, you know, do you have a son? Yeah, I have a son. Did he move away recently? Yeah, he moved away recently. Um, I just feel like God was saying that, you know, it's not just geographically. There's like a strain in the relationship. Yeah, she starts tearing up, and I say, you know, I don't think God spoke that to me by accident. I think God actually wants to heal your relationship with your son. She's just weeping in CVS. Why? Because the Spirit of God let me borrow something for a moment to use as a gift. <clears throat> And so that's a, a word of knowledge. You know something that you shouldn't know just based on your own human wisdom. He gives you a, a word of knowledge, and you can walk in that stuff. One of the ways to walk in that is to just try it out and look like an idiot 150 times. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, ah, must be someone else. You just use that excuse. Oh, I must not be in the room, you know, which does happen. Sometimes that is true. Uh, the other thing, uh, number three, he gives us the gift of faith um, to, to respond to the gospel of Jesus. It was not your idea. It was an idea of the Spirit of God to give you faith to believe. Um, the, the fourth thing he gives us as a gift is healing, uh, to walk in the gift of healing. I believe that we can all walk in these gifts. The Holy Spirit distributes as he wills, but I believe that all this is accessible to those who are filled with the Spirit of God. 
And so, I, I mean, countless stories of people who are broken, beaten, battered, and bruised that in a moment are miraculously healed by the Spirit of God. I remember being involved at uh, a Jesus Culture Conference in Los Angeles and Hollywood uh, Universal Studio Walk. I don't know, was anybody else on that trip back then? Kylie, of course you were on that trip back then. Um, and... Uh, you know, we did this conference at Banning, who's coming, you know, activates, and he said, well, it's not supposed to stay here. you got to go do the thing. And so I'm a youth leader at the time, and uh, some of my kids actually believe this stuff, you know. They're like, we're going to see miracles, and people are going to get out of wheelchairs. And I'm like, yeah, you know. So sure enough, there's a person in a wheelchair, Universal City Walk, and our, our kids are like, this is the one. God's going to heal them. I'm like, yeah. You know, on the inside, I'm like, this might be so awkward. Um Come on, let's be honest. I'm like, yeah, 100%, you know. And so sure enough, I, I think it might have been Aaron Tashera or something, is, right? Someone, a few of our youth, uh, just teenagers, began to lay hands on this guy in a wheelchair in Universal City Walk. And you know what happened? He got up. And he started walking <laughs> right there. They just accessed by faith a gift to release healing by the power of the Holy Spirit in that moment. I've, I've laid hands on tumors, and I've, they've shriveled up under my fingers to just seen that happen, felt that happen. Uh, God has healing by his Holy Spirit. The next one, this is fun. I, this, I actually desire this a little bit more, is miraculous powers. <laughs> it's different than healing. This is just like fun, wacky stuff that this God does. No one can explain signs and wonders. Uh, we've heard stories of, you know, uh, uh, Paul Kane, he had a wallet appear in between the sheets of this bed at a hotel. He lost his wallet in a different city entirely, and God just, like, made it appear somewhere. Uh, we see, you know, in Scripture uh, how Stephen was just teleported somehow to a different location. There's just signs and wonders. It's just miraculous power. So the Holy Spirit just does what he does sometimes uh, beyond our capacity and our human strength. Uh, the next one is, is prophecy. Um, uh, I love this, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 3. This is coming off the love chapter. It says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit. You could just bank your life on that right there. But then he says, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. So this is a gift of the Spirit is to prophesy to take the revelation of heaven and make it known to man. And here we go. I'm not going to teach on this a whole lot, but I'm going to pitch this. Get your phones out and scan this Sunday and Monday night. Pastor Pat is going to do a master class on prophecy. And this is something that uh, we've walked in. It's part of our identity is to walk in the gift of the prophetic. And there's a whole teaching and so much into that. But it's one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is prophecy. The next thing Uh, is the distinguishing between spirits or discernment. Here's a little pastoral note on discernment. Uh, It's been uh, sadly manipulated to be something that it was never intended to be. Um, People use discernment if they have this keen sense or they have a genuine gift from the Holy Spirit to discern things or to decide uh, the the climate of something, the spiritual tone of something, if it's good or bad and what typically happens in the history of the church is that people discern something unto judgment. They say, well, that's bad, and it's unto judgment. But what we just saw, and what's very clear in Scripture, is that the Holy Spirit has been given unto love. It's to eagerly desire to walk in love and desire these gifts. And so if somehow you walk in the gift of discernment, the Holy Spirit is allowing you to discern things so that you can love better. You say, that is broken, what can I do? That is broken, maybe God could intervene. That is broken, how can I pray? That is evil, how can God come and wreck everything that it's about? That's the gift of discernment. You you actually have access to the glorious love of God through understanding things beyond what they are at surface level. It's a great gift of discernment. And so uh, the, the challenge has historically, I feel like people with the gift of discernment, they just become critics. They just, you know, they come into an environment and they're just, you know, they're, they're, thermometers, not thermostats. You know, you know what I mean by that? They come into a room and they're like, ah, something's a little bit off. I'm going to check out. You know, specifically in settings like this. I'm like, 
a worship team, and something. I mean, what's happening? <laughs> you know, let's check out. But I think God gives the gift of discernment so that you can actually be a thermostat. Something's off, but I change the atmosphere. <laughs> Something's a little bit off, but I, I bet if I just engage in worship, I, I bet if I just bring a word of encouragement, this situation, it's, it's actually hopeless in this house. I wonder maybe God wants to use me to bring hope to this house. So the gift of a discernment actually leads us into love, into hope, into faith, into mercy. Whatever it is that God wants to do, uh, you have an amazing ability to see what's needed in an environment. Speaking in different kinds of tongues, again, uh, I'm going to pitch this. This is another master class by Pastor Pat Sparrow. Uh, it's a 45-minute teaching uh, that we have, equipu.me. That's our kind of online, online learning base. But Pat does a beautiful job teaching on the gift of speaking in tongues, uh, very thorough scripture all throughout to understand deeper and better what it means to have the gift of speaking in tongues. It's something that our church values and we hold as a core belief. That's one of the ways, not the only way, but one of the ways that the Holy Spirit uh, has graciously gifted us is with the gift of tongues. And then the other one is the interpretation of tongues, which might be covered in that a little bit as well. Um, so, I mean, this really does happen, and you can hear different sort of stories. One is that someone's speaking in an entirely different tongue, uh, some, some rambling by the Spirit, and then someone will straight up understand. And this used to you know, happen in our church occasionally. Um, someone would get up and interpret what the person just said, what God wanted to say. I don't know why he works that way. Why wouldn't he just say it through that one person? I'm not sure. <clears throat> it's because it's to each person as the body, isn't it? And, uh, but then there's other stories. Uh, this guy, David Campbell, shares a story about his wife was in uh, Scotland. She was sharing at this meeting and never does this, and it's not very common, but she began to speak in what she understood as tongues from the platform. And there was a young girl there in Scotland visiting from New Zealand, actually. And she was uh, fluent, which mo uh, most people would not be to this day, fluent in Maori, which is the native language of New Zealand. This girl is somehow fluent in this language, somehow in Scotland, somehow in this meeting. This lady starts speaking in tongues on the platform, and this girl is hearing this lady speak in her native Maori tongue the praises of God. She goes up to her after and said, how did you know my language? And she said, I don't know your language, but God must know your language. And so somehow she was interpreting, whether that was what the lady was saying, I don't know, but it was definitely what she was hearing was an interpretation of what God wanted to minister in that moment which is just kind of cool. Amen? So there, there's these gifts. Hey. It's sturdy. <laughs> I was at this church a few weeks ago, and uh, this, uh, the, I don't know who he was, was bringing the pulpit out for a guest speaker, and the iPad fell off and just landed face down on the platform. And he got fired. But... Um, <laughs> I don't know if he did, but. <laughs> and so these nine gifts, uh, they're here according to Scripture in 1 Corinthians 12 and, and also in 14. Uh, for the common good, these are for the edification, for the building up, for the beautifying of the church of God, and to reach the world through the power of his Holy Spirit. And like Paul said very begin the very beginning, I don't want you to be uninformed about these things. It's a heart cry as a leader, as a pastor, to just hope that our church is waking up on Monday and Tuesday morning understanding that there's more to this life than this life. That there's more than our idols. There's more than our worthless places. There's more than our false hopes and securities. There's more that the Holy Spirit has generously gifted to the church. It's just to walk in the power of his spirit. It's to impart what is needed for the encouragement and edification of people. I love this story in Acts chapter 3, kind of continuing off last week when we were talking about Peter this new boldness that he carried. Uh, it says this in Acts chapter 3, 1 through 10. It says, one day, everybody say one day. Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him them his attention, expecting to get something from them. 
Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple court, walking and jumping and praising God. (laughs) It's a good day. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. Uh, That's the same scripture again. Um, I love this line in verse 6, silver or gold I don't have, but what I do have I give to you. Because it just said in Acts 2.45 that the apostles, the early church, they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. (laughs) So Peter and John did have silver, and they did, did have gold, and they did have what this guy actually wanted. And so all these years, he's dragged to this gate called Beautiful, and he's begging and asking, and Peter and John do have the thing that the guy wants. But how many know that The Holy Spirit just doesn't give us what we want. He gives us what we need. And and just like the upgrade stories and all, if you can see through the humor of that, the reality that a lot of times in this life we're just going after what we want, but oftentimes God wants to give us what we actually need through his Holy Spirit. Silver or gold uh, would be in the idol category. There's nothing wrong with money. It's the love of money that's evil, but... But what we could say is that this man had settled for something that would fulfill a temporary need. But what God wanted to give him was something that would change him forever. He wanted money, but God wanted to bring him healing. Maybe what the Holy Spirit will do in a situation will be far greater than the worthless idol we are clinging to. We think that will provide. We think that will satisfy. We think that will bring some sort of you know, purpose to our lives, but I think when the Holy Spirit comes and he visits us and he sees past what we want into the very thing we need, he can deliver. I love this story in Acts chapter three. It actually serves as kind of a, a principle for us in, in this church, um, what we call a one-day principle because this, this passage starts with one day, just one day, just one day, Peter and John, they were doing the thing they always did, going to the temple to pray at three o'clock in the afternoon. This guy was just doing the thing he always did. He was going to the temple to beg like he, he, he always did, and he was probably fairly successful at it because Jewish people, they were benevolent, believe it or not. There was this generosity that was kind of expected, especially around temple time, and so he was doing okay. And Peter and John doing what they did just any day. This beggar doing what he did just any day. But how many know that any day can turn into one day? Any day can turn into this one day because we know from the the testimony of Scripture that this one day was way different than every other day. That this, this what expected to be just any other day turned into this one day where miracle signs and wonders broke out, where the temple was left in awe and wonder, where this man who had been lame from birth could now walk and sing and dance. And so we can never treat just any day as if it's just any day. My, my hope and my hunger from this message this morning and our eyes being open to what the Holy Spirit offers is this, is that on a Monday and a Tuesday at work, at home, at school, we would never embrace the attitude that it's just any other day. (laughs) No, I actually walk according to the Spirit of God. And I've been generously gifted the gifts of the Spirit. Not because of what I've done, but because of what He has done. And so I no longer have the right any longer to walk into an environment hopeless and helpless and just treat it like any other day. My confident expectation is that the environments I walk into, every Sunday we gather, every moment we have together, it's always an opportunity for a one day. And we use this principle like this, that, you know, why do we serve and we have teams and we set up and we do this thing? It's it's under this idea that, like, I hope one day you invite your drunk uncle to church. (laughs) Everyone's got one. That's relatable. And I hope he comes to church, and and I hope that the people on the front doors are super friendly that day. 
I hope they disarm the heck out of him, all his judgments about church. And, and I hope that when he comes in, we're singing with passion to a God that's actually alive. And I, I hope that through the worship, there's something that connects to him, that he has some sort of way to, to, to see a lyric and connect to a song and be brought into an atmosphere of worship. That's, it's all methodical. And I hope through the preaching of the word, it's not too much Christianese and it's not too disconnected and it's too, not too hairy-fairy. No, I, I hope that on that day when your drunk uncle comes to church, that there's an atmosphere that's providing an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Because I believe this, that your drunk uncle will have a one day. And it'd be the greatest privilege of my life if somehow on a Sunday morning at Equippers Church at the Clark Center in Arroyo Grande that we got to be part of his one day. I hope when your neighbor comes, the kids' program's fantastic. The kids felt loved and embraced and would never treat any Sunday like it's any other day because every Sunday is someone's one day. But to take it further than that, at work tomorrow, in your marriage, in your home, whatever sphere you're called to, I want to remind you that you actually have access to the gifts of the Holy Spirit to see like Peter and John, what you want, I can't give you. But what you need, I can give you. What you were clinging to, it's hopeless. But what I can give you is full of hope. What you were clinging to would never heal you. But I have access to the one who can. Any day can be someone's one day. So church, would you stand to your feet? I'm going to wrap up. If you're able to, to lift your hands and posture yourself. It's one thing to posture yourself on the outside, but sometimes it's a symbol of posturing yourselves on the inside. So Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you've been generously distributed as you see fit to the body of Christ. And our, our longing and our hunger is not to be ignorant or uninformed concerning these spiritual matters concerning the opportunity and the invitation to have a renewed mind that is like Christ and a spirit that understands because it's connected to the very spirit of God. And so right now, I release the power of the Holy Spirit upon your glorious church to walk in a greater power and greater presence. God, I thank you for visitations in the night, encounter in the day. Lord, I thank you just reminded of Mark chapter 8, it says that Jesus, Matthew 8, sorry, Jesus looked on the crowds with compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were lost and confused. God, would you stir our hearts and disrupt our lives to look at the people around us as sheep without a shepherd, clinging to worthless idols, dead-end roads. God, would we be the ones like Peter and John to come along in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. By the Holy Spirit that's been apportioned to me because God loves me and he loves you, be healed. I just felt when I was shopping that, I don't know, God has something that you need. Hey, I was... I was just praying and I didn't have faith for something in our family. I, I stopped dreaming for our marriage and our kids. I, I feel like the Holy Spirit he just gave me faith as a gift. Lord, we love the way you work and you move and you breathe among us. God, I just ask that those silly little scenarios would be a reality. As your Holy Spirit comes and inhabits based on this New Testament reality that we would walk in the power and the presence that are rightfully ours, not based on our merit, but based on the merit of Jesus and his generosity. So God, right now, again, a fresh baptism of your Holy Spirit. Overwhelm us with your mind, with your spirit. To put your hands down, but stay standing. If there's anybody in this room who is not currently walking in relationship with Jesus Christ. I'd imagine there might be somebody because the Holy Spirit's here. 
you're getting a glimpse of that gift of faith. <laughs> you're, you're getting a glimpse of, whoa, this, is a, this isn't my idea. This is God's idea to find God. It's this beautiful way that the Holy Spirit works. And you just feel your, the core of who you are being drawn into the presence of God to make him Lord, to as saviors, to experience his forgiveness. Thousands of years ago, about 2,000, Jesus Christ died on a cross, dying a sinner's death, and paying the highest price. So you would no longer be allotted death, but be given free life according to his sacrifice. Maybe you've been walking in sin and shame, condemnation. I want to let you know today that there's an exchange that can happen. You can give all the heavy burdens that you've been carrying and exchange them for the free gift of grace unto salvation and abundant life. And if that's you, you say, hey, I want to make that decision today, John. I want to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I want to trust him with my past. I want to experience this freedom that you've been singing and talking about. I want to walk in a life of power and purpose, no longer clinging to worthless idols. If that's you, would you just shoot up your hand real quick? I want to pray with you. Say, hey, that's me. Amazing. Awesome, brother. Anybody else? Come on, someone's one day today. Anybody else? Say that, that. This isn't just any other day. This is my one day opportunity. This is the day that everything changes. Heaven and earth collide and my life is transformed. Is there anybody else that say today's that day? Wants to join my friend. Let me tell you, that one is enough. But if there's anybody else, I'm on eyes closed, head bow, you're taking inventory. I want to draw the Holy Spirit, the invitation of the Holy Spirit to receive the free gift of salvation, forgiveness, His grace. So sufficient. Amazing. I see that hand. Beautiful. Come on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Is there anybody else before we pray who wants to join my two friends today? make that decision. It's free. Everything changes. Beautiful. Well, hey, we're going to pray this prayer together. And uh, we don't pray this just out of repetition or religion. We actually pray this every Sunday based on that principle that I would hate for anyone to come here and not be able to receive Jesus as their Lord. And um, But we don't just do it out of duty or philosophy, but we actually believe that God changes lives. Everybody around you who calls himself a Christian started this really simple way. Just the first foot on the journey comes by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So church, can we pray this together full of faith? Can we do that? Let me hear your voices. Can we pray this together full of faith? And if you're praying this for the first time or rededicating your life, I just believe that God will meet you in this moment. But would you repeat after me with full voices? Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sin. Today I repent. I turn towards you. Trust you with my past. Trust you with my present. And I look to you for my future. I thank you that in you all things are made new. I no longer cling to worthless idols, but I have a living hope in Jesus and today I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus name Amen Thanks so much for tuning in we hope that that message was inspiring encouraging and hopefully equipped you for life and if you're looking to get connected with Equippers Church, you can go to equipperscc.com slash connect, fill out a simple form, and someone from our team will be reaching out. You can find all kinds of opportunities to connect, to give, and receive prayer on our website, equipperscc.com. And hey, we really hope to meet you in person sometime, see you in the room. But until then, keep tuning in. We hope that you are blessed by Equippers Church here on YouTube. Love you so much. God bless.